Awesome. So here's kind of one of the more recent investments, probably the most recent investment in this portfolio, which I was kind of surprised to see in it, but it's in the portfolio. Uh, it is Bank of America 325. What I wanted to do real quick is I want to show you something that I've been doing very subtly throughout this class, but it is something that is actually really, really critical because it's like the core of, of the psychological investing mindset that I think you really need to succeed. And that's when I write a, a ticker, right? This is the ticker that represents Bank of America. But I always put in front of it as a dollar sign. And the reason why is because you want to naturally condition your mind to think that like the stocks that you invest in are equivalent to money. And you know, you represent those stocks with tickers. And so when you tell your mind that the tickers and the stocks you're buying equal money, what it does is it naturally predisposes you to what? It predisposes you to success. It predisposes you to think that like I to succeed because I'm investing in a great asset. I'm investing in things that are going to succeed for me. And that's a, that's a big concept that has really like just been something that's been habitual for me for a very, very long time. Because I first heard this concept, I was like, wow, this is like so smart. Like, why would you not do this? And so like you always, always, always want to put a dollar sign in front of your ticker. And it's going to literally probably take like five extra seconds when you're sending that message to somebody, if you're putting in that order, you're doing whatever. But you, you want to make it so that you're, you, you're always associating like tickers with money. So what you do that is using this dollar sign. And then when you're talking about actual dollar numbers, what I do just to kind of like avoid confusion is I just I just write them out as numbers. Because in reality, and this is really a big thing to think about, like the price that you're trading at, it is kind of it's kind of irrelevant. Price it's really it's it's just a number. You know, it's it's just a number. And like you know, this can be an eight hundred dollar stock, this can be an eight dollar stock. At the end of the day, like it doesn't really matter as long as I know that there's more upside in the position than I'm actually risking, you know? And so it's important to, to kind of understand that the actual price you pay for a stock doesn't really matter so as long as the, there's upside in the position. And similarly, like every stock has the potential to create windfall profits for you if you just invested in. So um, that's kind of one thing I want to share with you that is, is, is super, super huge. And so with that said, I wanna look for a second at the fundamentals on Bank of America. Um, and it's nothing like crazy exciting, uh, but basically, you know, you've got a company and they run a bank, all right? I mean, banks are good, banks are cool, they're, they're bank. Banks make stupid amounts of money, so bank equals stupid money. I mean, frankly, you can look at their financials, you can look at their PEs, and you know, the PE is actually pretty pretty low right now, which is kind of interesting. You know, they pay a solid dividend, they're paying out their money. If you look sort of at their stats, you can kind of look at their revenue, which is important. You want to make sure they're making money. But you know, they're worth $300 billion, and you know, their their revenue for the past 12 months has been $90 billion. And usually, like if somebody's making $90 billion and they're worth $300 billion, like that's a pretty solid investment. You know, that's like what? a little bit more than three times multiple of like their top line revenue. Of course, they make no money because their EBITDA doesn't exist. That's not the best, but they still have a pretty nice gross profit, making like $90 billion. You know, they have good earnings. And so, you know, if they're making money, and honestly, I've seen stocks that have really, you know, big stocks for long-term investments that have worked with a ratio much greater than three to one. They've worked with ratios up to like five to one, up to 10 to one. Um, and, and oftentimes you'll even see a lot of new tech companies like 15 to 20 to one revenue to valuation. And the reason why is because you're basing it off of like expectations of what? You're basing it off of expectations of future earnings, right? Future earnings potential. And so because of that, you can kind of value stuff and anything you want to value that. And so that's why I don't really focus too much on these financials because there's no like hard set rule of like your blah, 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 blah must be like a 5x multiple of blah, 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 blah. Like, like that's not really the case. And, and what it really boils down to a lot of times are the technical setups and the market perception and, and it's just like whether or not it's gonna go up or not. And like the financials, they're important for long-term investments. And that's why um, I think this uh, Bank of America, it, I just got to film my most recent trades. This was not a long-term play for me. This is one of the only investments in this portfolio that was actually a swing trade. Um, and the reason why is because the stock had an absolutely freaking amazing inverted head and shoulder setup. And if I see an inverted head and shoulder setup, I will not hesitate to put the buy button on right here because it's a phenomenal setup. And you know, you guys know a head and shoulder setup. 
uh, from the stock market smash class, basically you take this upside, you add that to the upside, and I can't even draw how high it goes, but that's basically your upside, right? So you kind of see, with this investment, what we saw was, was pretty basic, right? And I'm still not tall enough. Maybe if I stand on this tool, I could, I could reach it for you. I don't think I can reach it for you, I'm sorry, I really tried. But basically, you're gonna have this first shoulder, right there, and then the, the downward head, right? So you have down, up, then down to the head, and then up, and then down, and then up. And like that should reverted in shoulder setup. And I put that chair back. What basically what I did, I saw that, and I was like, okay, well, I know that this is a really great setup. So um, I bought, what, uh, 30, right? So it's like, basically right here, you buy it, and you're solid, and that's, that's that. And it is basically done really, really well. This bottom point right here is about like 25 bucks, and the entry point was at about 30. So you add about $5 to that, and you have your price target of about $35 as your, as your target. Yes, uh, yeah, I mean, that was basically the play. This is an inverted head and shoulder setup with a moving average support. I mean, there's not much else to it. It was a pretty basic, simple play. I got in a little bit earlier, but like, I would rather get in a little bit earlier than get in late. And basically your stop loss on this trade is about one quarter here. So your stop loss is usually about like right here. So if this is like halfway, this is one quarter of this right here. You want to set your stop at about one quarter usually. Um, if it's a tighter setup, you can set it at one half. Like if your setup is like a, a 15 minute setup, I would usually use about a half, maybe use this shoulder height right here. But because this is more of like a weekly setup, this is over the course of a couple of months, you're gonna naturally expect a little bit more volatility. Basically kind of the rule set I like to use is the more time that you're in a trade, like you can expect like a little bit of more BS to go on and still actually have that net result that you want just because like weekly trades are gonna take a little bit longer to play out than um, like one minute candles are. That's kind of the, the big takeaway from, from that position. It's a pretty basic play on technical analysis. I mean, it wasn't that much to it. You know, you've got a crossover here that's really nice and you've got a crossover here that's also really nice. I might, I put, so I don't know, it's, it looks like it's gonna go down a bunch. But besides that, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty basic. And like once you understand technical analysis, like you start to realize that a lot of times you can just make investments based off stock price and you don't have to actually worry about like the actual underlying financials. And I think that's a good example here because I'm only gonna be in this position for a couple of months, right? Or I guess I've been in this for, I mean, that's about a, wait, that's about a year or so, isn't it? But um, like the only reason you're in it is because you know the setup works. And so that's kind of the big thing. But I wanna show you real quick before we finish up on this one. In, uh, like before the crack, right? Like this stock has been very, 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 very volatile, right? And they've just been absolutely, absolutely crazy. What I want to draw your attention to is right here, um, before they had this giant crack, like right, kind of like here, you got this exact same thing happening where, but it's a normal head and shoulder setup, right? So instead of being bearish and being a good thing, it's just a normal head and shoulder setup. And so here's another one of those examples where, what, you've got this shoulder here, you've got the head here, and then this shoulder here, and like, what do you do? right here what do you do in 1999 you know at the end of the DACA it's anyway basically this level right here is the top of your head this level is at about forty dollars this level right here is thirty dollars and your target on the trade is thirty minus or uh, forty minus thirty is ten and then you do thirty minus ten and you do this you subtract it and you get your price target of twenty dollars which is exactly what the stock went to give or take like a dollar or two and, and so not a phenomenal example, like the head setup, ugh, I love it, it's amazing. Uh, all the setups are amazing. And here's one of those examples where it just freaking works. And obviously when I'm doing this in the future, I mean you can buy puts for uh, a, a, like 25 strike to 22.50 strike for like, you know, pennies, maybe 25, 27.50 strike might be a dollar. And then, you know, you literally 10X your investment or 8X or 6X. Um, on, on those puts. So that's, that's another really phenomenal, phenomenal example, kind of leveraging your upside. And again, that's, that's based off of the assumption that this is gonna work out. It's based off of you know, the assumption that this is gonna go all the way to whatever your target is. It can't even, like, it's just too high off the board. But um, you, know, you can buy strike prices halfway, you can buy strike prices a quarter of the way, you can buy strike prices closer to bid, closer to the current price. You're gonna have more upside uh, the further away you get, assuming that you're, you're factoring into your target is the, the height of the head and shoulders head up minus 
the height of the head, you know, right here, right? So you're assuming that you know, like, whatever this is, you subtract that with some simple finger math, and that's where your target's going to be. So, with that said, if you get a ton of value out of this module, that was the core, that was the basis by Make America. And kind of a different play. Like, most people are like, oh, I'm going to buy banking stocks. Banking's going to go up in the next 40 years. Like, I hate banking so much. Like, they take so much money. But, like, if I have a great play on any stock, like, I'm going to take that play because it's like, it's, it's just mine, right? It's like, why not? So that was kind of the, the big, 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 big play on this, guys. I guess it net me probably, what is it, uh, like 35? So give or take 12%, 15% of that trade. Not like that much, to be honest, but I mean, this is still pretty good, you know? So it was a winning investment. It wasn't like an out of the park one, but you know, it worked. So with that said, thanks so much, and I will see you in the next module. Apply it, absolutely crush it. Woo.